recently we at Inductive Automation went through and updated the security hardening guide. And for those who are unfamiliar, the security hardening guide is a document that we've put together to provide general guidance on how to set up and secure your ignition installation. And we've laid out the entire process over a course of 10 steps. And the document includes uh, guidelines specifically for the ignition software, as well as general suggestions regarding the hardware and network where ignition is installed, the operating environment. You know, as we get into the 10 steps, I will note that we're going to pause in the middle to allow you know time to answer a few questions. We'll try to get to those today throughout the presentation. Security hardening guide starts kind of an introduction section talking about a good foundation. And I wanted to mention, you know, that it, it goes over a couple concepts that you should keep in mind as you're establishing security, not just for your ignition projects, but within the context of its greater environment. And so defense in depth is a strategy that uses overlapping protective mechanisms, uh, supporting the ability for defenders to monitor and respond. So instead of relying on a single point of security, you should have layers of hardened security. And multiple layers requires a much more sophisticated hack to compromise a system. One example of this is the Purdue model, or ISA 95, provides a reference model for a layered OTIT approach to segmentation. The other concept I wanted to talk about is called a cybersecurity framework. And it's a system of standards, guidelines, and best practices to manage risk with computer, network, or information systems. And frameworks should align with organizational objectives. These are appropriate for larger regulated organizations, but can also be useful for any organization, regardless of size, because the framework offers tailorable, common language, and systematic methodology for risk management. So you don't have to necessarily adopt all of it. You can tailor it to your needs within your context, your scope. And so it's designed to complement an organization's cybersecurity program and risk management process, not replace it. And uh, the Department of Homeland Security, Industrial Control System, Cyber Emergency Response Team, it's a, a mouthful, but uh, we call it ICS CERT, is a great resource for recommendations and additional information. With those concepts in mind, let's look at the actual 10 steps, starting with step one, which is securing the gateway. And so forcing secure communication with HTTPS using an SSL or TLS certificate is the first and most important step towards securing the gateway, because this ensures that all subsequent steps towards protecting your gateway are being communicated across a secure channel. So what SSL or TLS does is it encrypts the data sent over the HTTP protocol and WebSockets that are used for all traffic between the designer, vision clients, and perspective sessions in the gateway. It also helps for security vulnerabilities, uh, known as session hijacking, like man-in-the-middle attacks, cross-site scripting, and, and session sniffing. And just as a terminology note, you probably heard I was saying SSL or TLS. SSL, Secure Socket Layer, is the predecessor to the transport security or TLS protocol. And so SSL is a, a deprecated technology. We don't use SSL, uh, Ignition blocks all SSL, you know, by default now inside the platform. However, SSL is still widely used to refer to secure communication. And uh, even though TLS has replaced it, often people will say SSL, meaning TLS. And so I uh, just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. SSL and TLS will be used kind of interchangeably in our, in our document. Um, and in this presentation today, but uh, when we talk about it, we do mean TLS. And so, for example, modern digital certificates supporting TLS are commonly referred to as SSL certificates still uh, in the world today. In order to enable secure communication for ignition, you'll need to obtain and install one of these SSL certificates. And rather than using a self-signed cert, we recommend that you purchase an SSL certificate from a certificate authority or acquire a valid SSL certificate from your IT department if you intend to enable SSL. You will then want to force an SSL redirect. And so you can go into our settings on our gateway and you can do a force secure redirect. You can go also set up headers and do HSTS and, and do a preload and, and sign up for all that. All of that is outlined in the security hardening guide. But essentially, that's going to make it so that all traffic that tries to come in over an unsecure port will be automatically redirected and forced to use TLS. So after SSL is enabled, that includes all clients, designers, and web browsers will be re redirected to that SSL port if they're trying to use that standard HTTP port. And by default, when you install Ignition, the SSL port is 8043, 
but you can certainly change that to whatever you want, including the standard SSL port 443. Now, now that you got this, you know, SSL certificate, you know, most traditional SSL certificates have a cumbersome life cycle that needs to be renewed often. Now, this can be simplified and automated by using a certificate renewal process like the Automatic Certificate Management uh, Environment Protocol called ACME. I mean, ACME is a uh, automated framework for obtaining and renewing SSL certificates for your domain so that uh, SSL can be enabled on your web server. And we recommend using Let's Encrypt, which is a free, automated, and open certificate authority that uses this ACME protocol to handle these SSL certificates. And that makes it so that any domain administrator can spin up an ACME client that points to the Let's Encrypt ACME server to obtain and auto-renew these SSL certificates. So it just makes your life a little easier to maintain. All right, so your gateway is secure. Uh, time for step two, which is locking the gateway. In the gateway, as many of you know, you have your gateway web page where you go to do your initial configuration. And on that gateway web page, there are three tabs. There's home, status, and configure. And when, by default, when you install Ignition, the configure and the status tabs are password protected. They're locked down by the administrator security level. And so for additional protection, you can go and modify that security level, add additional security levels if you want. Uh, you can also lock down the home page. So this is where the various launchers are, how you navigate to different applications that you host on your Ignition system. And uh, security levels and role-based user authentication can be used to lock uh, all of these down as well as the designer.